right. Um, John, it's been an interesting week with uh, with WWDC here. And uh, and I've had obviously we talked about uh, our initial reactions from the keynote and State of the Union with Dave Mark on Monday, uh, which was awesome. Thanks for everybody for um, for participating in that. It was a blast. And thanks to Dave Mark, too. I dug I did some dugging. I dug I dug some didding, John, because I wanted to learn more about a few things. And uh, I dug into Apple's iCloud private relay, which is which was really interesting to me. And I was curious about how they were doing what they were doing and um, what it affects on your devices. So not only did I go and watch the WWDC session about this, I actually installed iOS 15 on our family spare iPhone 10 R and, but it runs great on that device, by the way, I, I have, I mean, I, I didn't inherit any apps or anything. I started it fresh, but, uh, but it's been, it's been quite stable. So the best place to start when thinking about private relay is to start about start from what we know about how a VPN server works, because this is not a VPN server, but it's a good place to start. So with a VPN server, if I'm connecting to your website, John, uh, normally it would just be me connecting directly to your website, right? With a VPN server, I'm connecting to the VPN server and then the VPN server is connecting to your website. But the VPN server theoretically has all the information. They know where I'm connecting to and they know who I am, right? They see both sides of the chain. Apple did not want that. So what Apple did was they created a double server scenario and they have ingress servers, which are the ones that I would connect to. And then they have egress servers, which are the ones that connect to you. So I would connect to an ingress server the ingress server would talk to the egress server and the egress server would talk to you. Now here's where it gets really even more interesting. The ingress server is owned by Apple. The egress server is not, uh, from my tests, I'm seeing it owned by Cloudflare, but that's just me here in the Northeast. It could, they, I'm sure they could have many different partners. What's also interesting is that the egress server has no idea who I am. It only knows what I'm requesting. Apple's ingress server only knows who I am and does not know what I'm requesting because my request is encrypted on my device and sent all the way through to the egress server. So Apple knows it's me, but they don't know what I'm looking for or what I'm getting. And the egress server knows what I'm getting or what I'm looking for, but it doesn't know that it's me. Speed wise, obviously this sounded like a thing that might slow things down. It does not. I had like 33 millisecond ping times all the way through. It was super fast. I, I got, I was on Wi-Fi because I'm only doing it on my, on my iPhone. So I haven't been able to test ethernet, but I got, you know, I'm on that fiber connection here. I got 300 megabits in both directions, which was li the limitation of my Wi-Fi. So that worked really well. It doesn't protect all traffic, John. Only really only three things are protected and really mainly just two of them. So when thinking about iCloud private relay, there's two things that go through it. All your DNS queries, a hundred percent of your DNS queries go through iCloud private relay and all your Safari browsing. Anything you do in Safari goes through this. Now you can turn it off, but it is on by default. If you have any paid iCloud subscription, they call it iCloud plus now, but it it's the same my subscription just became an iCloud plus subscription when I launched iOS 15. Uh, I'm not paying any more or any less, but any paid iCloud subscription, even at 99 cents a month uh, goes up to, you know, we'll, we'll let you use this and there's no traffic limits or anything. So Safari browsing and DNS queries. In addition to that, Apple is also encrypting. It, uh, Apple is also it, encrypting, but also sending across private relay any traffic from your apps that is not encrypted. So for example, the Mac geek gab app, if it's connecting to download our podcast in an, you know, in an encrypted way, HTTPS, it's going to let that go straight through to our servers. But if we're doing it as HTTP, it's going to go through private relay. And that's just to make sure all your web traffic is encrypted so that your local provider can't see what you're doing. Um, Local traffic, private domains, if you turn on a VPN, uh, and then, of course, like I said, secure traffic from your apps, none of those things 
uh, are included in private relay. All of those would bypass it. So you turn on a VPN, it's fine. Network operators can also block private relay by simply blocking the um, lookups to the private Apple's private relay servers and they publish what those servers are. So if you're running a corporate network or a university network or something, and you're like, I don't want, I want to be able to see and control what people are doing here. Um, you just block access to Apple's ingress servers and then private relay won't work, but it will tell the user, Hey, private relay is not able to be used on this network. Do you want to continue using this network without it? Or do you want to use a different network? And you can go turn it off, John, uh, in like if you go in on the iPhone, I can go into Wi-Fi settings and disable private relay. It's on by default, but uh, but you can go into the settings and turn it off. So I, I think Apple did it pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it, to be honest. Any uh, any questions um, or thoughts on this, John? Is the mail privacy protection separate from iCloud Plus? N- no. Uh, ma- the mail privacy protection, I believe, is included in iCloud Plus as well, I think. Um, and it it operates similarly to Private Relay. It, In fact, it uses Private Relay to load images, uh, like inline images that would be in mail. But that gets interesting, right? Because simply loading the image is all that needs to happen to let someone know that you have open the email, right? Like as soon as the image is loaded now, like your privacy is, is lost on that. So they know you've opened the email. Well, Apple has solved this problem. I dug into that too. They load all images through their private relay. So they hide your IP address, they hide your location. uh, And as soon as the email arrives on your device, it loads all the images. So it's going to throw off the metrics for your, uh, for email trackers, like, you know, like a MailChimp or a thing like that. It's just going to say, oh yeah, your open rate is through the roof. Um, but, uh, mm-hmm. but you won't know because, because to track open rate, what they do is they, they, they track whether or not an image has been loaded. And if the image has been loaded, then we know, oh, the mail's been opened. Well, that's going to happen whether or not the mail has been opened. And so that's how Apple's getting around it. The only caveat that I can see with that though, John, is that still confirms that the email made it to your device and so for spammers that are using this technology to confirm that your email address is valid, I think it still lets them confirm that your email address is valid. So that would be the right. I mean, I don't see any I don't see any way around that. So mm-hmm. uh, unless they don't load images for things that are put in spam, only things that make it to your inbox like there, there might be some filters there. Uh, their session was not clear on on you know the nuances okay. of that, but yeah. All right, yeah. I remember when we we talked about this. I mean, clearly it's gonna yeah. It's, as you observe, it's gonna uh, upset some. Uh, it's going to upset some systems when trying to do metrics. So. Yes. Oh, it, absolutely. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah, I know, I know. Quite frankly, I think think, think that's a, depending on your viewpoint, that's a good thing. Um, uh, Certainly from my viewpoint, it's a good thing. This will break all of the um, attribution tracking that Mm -hmm. Apple has, or that that, like the podcast industry is is trying desperately to implement. And I couldn't be happier about it. Like I'm really stoked that it will break this because- Safari and the podcast app will be separated from each other. You know, you won't have the same IP and user agent loading a sponsor's website that you would. So that we never implemented any of that here, but other podcasts do. And I'll Mm -hmm. just leave it at that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the industry's really been pushing. So I'm stoked about it. All right. Yeah, it's good. Um, uh, we probably have a little more cool stuff found to get to, which I, which would be good. Um, I want to, I want to talk about our sponsors, but I, I want to mention one thing that I had not dug into, but in the pre-show, somebody mentioned here that iCloud plus adds the uh, ability to use your own domain name, uh, which I find really interesting. I'm it's, I'm not sure how they're doing it. Um, I mean, the, the, like the normal way to do it would be, you would sign up with an email provider and then point what, what are called your MX records. So your, 
your domain records that tell servers, other mail servers, which mail server is the host for your domain. You point your MX records at your mail host. Like when I moved to Fastmail recently, I pointed my, I used my Dave the Nerd domain. I moved, I moved that entire domain over to Fastmail and I pointed my MX records to Fastmail. So like, I'm not sure what Apple is doing doing here if they're just going to let us send well they've always let us send from other domains so yeah i'm i'm curious to see if like apple wants to truly be a mail like an mx host for this kind of stuff so i'm i'm going to dig into that too this is it's been fun digging into this stuff so yeah it's good